somebody there. look far and wide to find many in the county or in the country to have a military record of, of that magnitude. Um, there are a few things here today. First of all, I would like to welcome, there are many families who would have uh, connections directly with the um, men and women of the 1916 to 21 period. Below and me, to look far and wide to find many in the county or in the country to have a military record of, of that magnitude. Um, there are a few things here today. First of all, I would like to welcome, there are many families who would have uh, connections directly with the um, men and women of the 1916 to 21 period. Below, August, O'Connor, and Sean, you've Winter, Desh, Cotton, Clark. Our son and Kushta, Kuvna, Khan, Milok, Kratlok, August, Party, and it's one and all Falter, War, Akur, Riv, Kok, and you've. Ladies and gentlemen, happy Easter to everyone. We're very pleased to have you here with us today at Brennan's Cross in Munich, where a new monument is going to unveil in a few moments' time, commemorating um, the men and women of the 1916 to 1921 period from this side of County Clare. But, you know, just standing here, there's so much history. You have the, the famine ravaged hills there of Glenagrass, Capanti Moor. You have a famine workhouse just down the road, an old uh, Victorian post box, and the Brennan's household here, the homestead, right behind us. Uh, there are a few things we're going to start off with here today, but. Um Many of you will know, but those who don't know, Nancy now resides in the Brennan's house um, and she's been very cooperative and helpful in making this monument here possible. Um, as I said, it's a black and it's a grey um, granite monument carved by Raymond Kelly, for which we're very grateful. Uh, just before we get on to the next stage, a, a few short words about our committee. It's a community-based historical committee. Uh, Marked this occasion and so there are a few prayers here I'd like to read. But first, some sentences of scripture. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Brothers and sisters, in remembering the events of 100 years ago, we, the Church, are called to give voice to shared suffering, silenced and untold stories, the many and nuanced, nuanced narratives, bravery and heroism, and commitment to ideals that were underpinned by shared and common aspirations. Heavenly Father, as we mark the centenary of the Easter Rising, grant to us a true sense of what it is to be your people in the world. We ask you to so guard and guide all who reflect on the past, all who lead us in the present, and all who shape our future, that we may live and grow in the image of Christ and in his glory, in whom we trust and through whom we pray. Amen.
week the rain is about to come down us uh, we have three reeds which will now be laid at the new, new memorial uh, first of all is Michael McCarthy Michael is a native of Partine. Somebody might have seen uh, a beautiful documentary he was involved in a few weeks ago, General on Start, about the Shannon scheme and the power. Oh, yeah. The second race to create a republic based on the principles which they had inherited from the United Irishmen of 1798 and Athenians of 1867. And just as the 1916 Rising brought together Fenians, Socialists, Patriots and Suffragettes, Catholics, Protestants, Dissenters and Atheists under the one Republican banner, it is a great honour for me to stand here today before people from different political traditions, from different backgrounds, with different views on religion and modern politics who stand united with a common purpose. The erection of this monument ensures that their memory will never be forgotten. But if we really want to honour them, no finer monument could be built to their memory than the republic for which they fought. An Ireland where all citizens are equal, regardless of sex, class, their views on religion or any other factor. And where all the people of Ireland hold the ownership of Ireland and have unfettered control of Irish destiny. Unfortunately, that is not the Ireland in which we live today. And if we are serious about commemorating the men and the women of 1916, then all of us need to study their principles and work to bring about the republic that they fought and died for, and not to pay lip service to their memory, dusting it down every 50 years or so, or whenever we find it convenient. Thanks very much. Well done, Podrick. Um, so one or a hooky the shop. Ach morgial or an duvlent at all either Irie Machnahaska, Augustin Chonga, Kathik make hun and no shin of Risha in Yuf. Cape Lean Teresh and Tyria Mach, Tan Gelga, Fos in Mel Bosch. Ni Federlin gun on villain, a her or an assassinic for shin. Tashe Olaf or Gal Gorhep or an realtis or an pobble e a acro. Ach an orade. Le ain't one tira, the entagard fibli, the slano and gelga, a kispiog a harleen, no yen and mud fui. Baha chonga e a lowert, a kispatamid, the rear of fui, mugfirish, mugdonaka, chant a kisalaid a kamora, kahamid and changa a olam, a kisi yusad, a kis kartan the gelga a husant. Is ebert anavyog e shin, a comparad, lesh an ebert vor a rinishid or nar son. Before I continue, I would first like to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of the other members of the Melech Party and Provisional Government of the Irish Republic to the people of Ireland. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which we, she receives her old traditions of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organized and trained her manhood, through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizens Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal herself, she now seizes that moment, and, supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes now in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign control of Irish destinies of, by a foreign people and government has not yet extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have inserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms, standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world. We hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state, and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom of its welfare and ex exaltation among the nations. 
the Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities of all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and all its citizens and declare of all parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of the permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all our men.